I certainly don't want to demean anyone's work. But I think we have a problem that we need to reckon with. We all have an inner craftsman, and indeed, part of being human is becoming a craftsman of some kind. And in so many of our professions, it's extremely difficult for us to develop that, for as it were, our inner craftsmen to come out. And I think it's best that we reckon with this and ask the question, can I be a craftsman in a cubicle? Can I be a craftsman in so many of the jobs, the professions that we have? So I have a couple principles I think can help us think about this. A craftsman is someone who makes quality and makes beauty. Being a crafter, a craftsman, is always going to be about quality and beauty. So consider for a moment, if you leave out either one, it's not really craftsmanship. If I make something that is very useful, make it for some utilitarian purpose, but there's, but there's no concern whatsoever for the beauty of it, it's well made, it's quality, but you're not so much gonna call me a craftsman. On the flip side, if I make something that is exteriorly beautiful, but is cheap, is not of good quality, then you're not gonna call me a craftsman. So a craftsman makes quality, he makes beauty. Now, another aspect here is the richness of the beauty of the things that we do in our human work. And you know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily just some actual physical product that we can hold up. It might be something that we've worked on. I mean, let me give you a couple of examples here. Um, quick story. Once in the classroom years ago, I gave as an ex I, I came in, I had just passed a plowed field on the way to class. And I said to the class, you know, I don't think there's anything more beautiful than a just plowed field. Well, I forgot that I actually had a Kansas farm boy in the class. And um, as a Kansas farm boy will do, he was very polite and he said, uh, excuse me, sir, but um, I'm thinking a just planted field is even more beautiful. I accepted the point immediately, but consider it, this is so neat. Just plowed, but plowed and planted. They, they, you might not actually be able to tell the difference looking at them, but there is a beauty in a just planted field that's not in a just plowed field. Because why? Because of how it serves human life. That one of the main beauties that is in our work and the fruits and products of our work is in how that work, that product, that fruit is connected to and serves human life. You know, you say, ah, that's, that's beautiful. Consider this, consider a well-crafted chair. You know, and you have to use your imagination for a moment here. What if... It, what if you crafted something that had many of the same curves and so forth, beautiful material, but it wasn't something you could sit in. It was just kind of a wooden structure. It wouldn't be nearly as beautiful as a well-crafted chair because you perceive in it not just a, a, a certain arrangement of form that is pleasing to see, but also you grasp the connection to human life. You can, you can picture someone sitting in it. You feel how this is a chair. So part of its beauty is how it serves human life. Final quick example. In the work of, uh, say, uh, someone with the art of medicine, even something like dressing a wound, picture how we might say, beautifully done. Because Part of it is this deeply human aspect of how something has been worked here that serves human life in a real way. So I'm saying that is an important part of the beauty. All right, so let's take that now and think about, give a quick analysis of what, understanding better why is it that we find it hard to be a craftsman in a cubicle.
And I'd say it's because one big reason, truth be told, that in many of our professions, quality is not encouraged, rewarded, sought for its own sake. It tends to more be valued if it pays. Quality is not sought in the sense of this is quality, therefore we do it, right? I, I, I hope I'm not being too cynical, but I think by and large we experience this in many of our professions where it's more, well, if it pays, then by all means, we're gonna do it quality. But a craftsman does quality simply because it's quality, whether it pays to some extent or not. I go further in thinking about our professions. This aspect of the beauty of serving human life. I think many of us in our professions experience a lack of connectedness to human life. Again, this is not to demean anyone's profession, but it's for us to recognize a challenge, right? The tax consultant, the IT professional, the computer programmer. These are very important things, but one doesn't immediately experience in that work so much how this serves human life. And I think that is very much a matter then of harder to experience the beauty of what I'm doing because it's harder to see how what I'm doing is connected to human life. One third point I think just in thinking about so many of the professions out there, and again it varies, is many of us, most of us have been more and more separated from the beauty of natural materials. I just kind of think about the old days. So many more people were just dealing with and in the beauty of the natural world. And that tends to not be the case so much now. So again, what's our, what's our challenge in just thinking about our various professions? Quality tends to not be sought for its own sake. It's often harder to experience the connection between what we're doing and really serving human persons. And by and large, we tend to have been separated from the beauty of the wonderful world around us and the materials of it. So what are we gonna do about it? I'd like to suggest step one is simply to be honest in recognizing the problem we have. So can I be a craftsman in a cubicle? I'm absolutely convinced the answer is yes but I'm just as convinced that the best path to bringing out our inner craftsmen, to succeeding, especially in the harder professions, the best path is to first really reckon with why it is so hard for us to be a craftsman in a cubicle. 